Hey guys, so it's extremely early. It's probably about 5.30 right now. I'm out here to do some fishing. Um, I'm at the same lake that I did the kayak catch and cook on. It's still dark right now. The sun's supposed to come up around 6.30. So first light probably at like 6.10, 6.15 ish. It's about 60 degrees outside right now. So I'm going to start by casting off some top water bait and then as the sun rises, I'll switch to the Sanko that I got and drop that a little bit lower. Let's get going. Get to some fishing. I need my light because it's so dark out the camera doesn't pick it up but there are bass jumping all over here I mean I'm gonna get out there right now with the kayak here and get to some fishing Got him. I wanted to make sure I got him up here. <laughs> Check it out. Got this on a five inch Sanko. Whew. Gorgeous. Very small, so I'm just gonna take him off and let him go. So I finally got a fish. I think it's been like seven or eight times now since I've gone out and haven't gotten much of anything. And granted, this fish is very, very small, but um, I'm gonna put him back. And off he goes. Well, that's perfect, because I need to be getting back, because I have a lot more stuff that I gotta do today. Okay, so the reason that that fish got yanked way up onto shore, it, pretty hard was that I wasn't sure how big he was when I hooked him so the hook set itself dragged him really close and there was a lot of slack in the line I didn't know how well the hook was set either so I didn't want to you know take all the time to reel in all the slack just to get him up so I just gave it another good yank and it pulled him up on the shore he was real small uh, which I'm not surprised because he was like it, it was right near the shore so fairly shallow waters. Uh, we're getting a little bit of rain now. But we're about to head up to Brian's college. He has a tennis tournament. So the next few hours of mine will be spent there. And I'll be bringing you guys along. And make sure you stay tuned because I still have a lot more planned for today. After Brian's tennis, uh, I'm probably gonna do some hunting if it's not raining. Hey guys, so I'm back at the house now and a three day process is coming to an end because these pelts are ready to go into the final process of just being dried and then stretched out. Okay, so that's kind of nasty. Um, I'm going to get this inside. Uh, 
try to not drip it. Sweet. Okay. Also, if you guys see me squinting in this eye, okay, so I didn't get this on camera, um, but when I was fishing earlier, I hooked some weeds that were probably 10 yards out from me, and I thought it was a fish at first, so I went to set the hook, and when I yanked on it, it freed from the weeds, and the lure came straight into my eye. And it, yeah, I saw rainbows. Um, <laughs> It didn't exactly feel great. It still kind of hurts. Uh, it's just like a, it feels like a sore muscle almost. And I can see fine, like 100% fine. It's just sore and it's really sensitive to light. So it, if you see me favoring this eye more and kind of squinting or anything, that's why it just it hurts kind of a lot. Okay. To start, I'm just gonna. Uh, I don't want to take them outside. <laughs> Because I know heat will cause the fur to slip. Um, I have a better idea. Okay, so I got this here. And I'm going to use it to just kind of hang these. Okay, so let's see. First one we have. This is gorgeous red, red squirrel pelt. Next up is this beautiful, uh, I want to say gray squirrel, fairly certain it's gray squirrel. Okay, so here we have the pelts, there's a squirrel, a squirrel, a squirrel, a rabbit, a squirrel, and a rabbit. So we're just going to let those sit and just drip for a little bit, and then we'll get to some stretching. So just like in my other pelt tanning video, I'm just hanging them out my window. So I managed to balance the pelts with my bag here. So now I can actually just open the window and they, they don't move. These are getting to a point where I'm going to have to start stretching them. Um, they still have a little bit more to go just to get the a lot of the surface moisture off. So. In the meantime, we're going to go do some hunting. Mainly house sparrows. Mainly house sparrows, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so these... Oh. I was ready for a big pellet reveal, and I got this. Um, there we go. God, they're gorgeous. These are my favorite. The domed... 25 cal, 33.95 grain. They really get the job done. As I'm sure you can tell from my hunting videos. Like this one. Smoked them. Oh, there he is. He just, he literally just dropped out of the tree. I mean, he's dead. Okay. Let's see where I got him. Oh my god. Hold on, hold on. That wrecked him. Oh, jeez. Go ahead, Kay. He's all yours. Nothing goes to waste. And that 25 cal sure does some damage. Well, that was the first shot. We have many more to take. Um, but first, I got to deal with something. Check this out. Hey, wh what are you doing out, huh? You just eating the flowers? Come on. Hey, come here. Come on. I know what you want. You want some food, don't you? Don't you, you fatty. Come on. I don't know how you got out. I have no idea. But we're going to get you back in. No, no, don't lay down. Come on. You want some food? You want some food? What are you doing? What are you doing? What? <laughs> 
What the heck? Okay, I'm gonna grab some peanuts here. Fun fact, goats love peanuts. Oh, hey, whoa, hey, I didn't know you were there. Come on, hey, come on, you want a peanut? Come on. Okay. You ready? You ready? Uh. Go ahead. Go. Go! Uh. Okay. I don't know how much the peanuts actually helped, but hey, they're eating them. Okay, now back to hunting. <laughs> okay, the cat is still having a field day over there. I don't know, I don't think I can actually take a shot on him. Might be able to. The second he jumps, the second he jumps up on that stone wall though, I can't, because that's the neighbor's house. <laughs> yeah, I can't take that shot. Sounds like a war of the squirrels over here. Maybe I can intervene. I don't know if you guys can see this thing running around. That was a good shot. Okay, well, let's pull him out. There we go. And... I'm pretty sure this is where it went in, because he was on the tree. Yeah, he was on the tree facing that way. Best part is, that was on the opposite side of the yard from, oh, holy crap, that cat just came out of the bushes. Holy crap, it's, <laughs> that thing just terrified me, oh my God. Okay, like I was saying, so it's good that th I got this on the opposite side of the yard from the pond because that means that I didn't diminish that population down there. Like there's no way they're running from way down there all the way to way down there. Like that's not, that's not happening. So this is good. Um, I'm going to tan the pelt at some point. I'm going to eat the meat very soon, probably today because I'm gonna cook up this squirrel. I'm gonna cook up the red squirrel I got in my latest video, the headshot. And then I'm gonna cook up the rabbit from the new location that I hunted. So we're gonna have a little small game cook. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Okay, so here's our three animals. Um, I'm going to drain them and then I'll give you guys a closer look, but this is the red squirrel, the rabbit, and the one from today. Okay, so a little closer look at all of the stuff that we're preparing. Again, this is the squirrel, this is the rabbit, and this is the one from today. This is pretty sweet, a little small game cook. I mean, I'm going to eat as much of it as I can, but I, this is a lot. A rabbit is a lot for me. Like, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> okay, I think that this is hot enough to start cooking. So. Let's throw on the squirrel that we just got today. Let's just, let's just start cooking that. That was really anticlimactic. Notice the vast color difference between the stuff that's been marinating and the fresh stuff. I just threw all the squirrel on right now, both of them. Okay, so you guys get kind of a treat today because I'm gonna show you, unless I already did, I don't know if I showed you guys in another video, my secret for cooking amazing squirrel and rabbit. It is Worcestershire sauce. You just sprinkle. I almost broke it. Okay. You just put a little bit of this into the, the pan with like two minutes left to cook and it's perfect. So um, 
since I didn't break it, I'm going to do that now on the squirrel. Look at that. I moved everything to the side into the oil and I'm just going to cover it now and just let it sit for another minute or two. I hope it looks as good as I think it will. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, now I'm just going to throw the rabbit on the same pan. Let's go. Okay, so I skipped through the rabbit cooking just because my camera's about to die and it looks the same as the squirrel when it's cooked. So this is what I got. This is all the rabbit here. It's absolutely marvelous. And then this is all the squirrel, both of them. You can see how that, that compares like one rabbit it's a heck of a lot more than two squirrels. I mean, granted, they're two red squirrels, but still. Like, that is a lot. Well, I'm sure it tastes amazing, so let's dig in. Here's a good old tenderloin from the rabbit. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Worcestershire sauce, not too much, just, just enough to give it the taste is perfect. I'm going to dive into the rest of this and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.